Hi and welcome to part two on how to use an Amazon flat fan to create a listing. We're going to talk today about how to create a listing with multiple variations. So what does that mean? If you ever see on a listing that there is um, coffee mugs, for example, which is what we're going to list, there's different colors and they're all showing up on the same listing. That's what we're going to create today. You can use a flat file because it's just the quickest and easiest way to do it and to also later on make any changes. So it may be a bit frightening at the beginning, but once you've got your flat file, you can always use the same file to make quick changes like uh, the pricing, uh, images, if you want to add new new keywords, if you want to add a new description or new bullet points, you can really, really quickly make changes there instead of having to go through your inventory and click edit and add, find the changes. And imagine, I mean, if you only have two different copy cuts, that's fine. but if you're selling t-shirts in like 10 different sizes and different colors, then that's a lot, a lot of work. So you really want to make sure you, you learn how to use a flat file because sooner or later you will have to use it. So let's do it now really quick and easy. I'm going to show you how to get the flat file, what information we need to put in, and then we're going to do this all together. So stay tuned. All right. So here we are. This is the normal page you would see when you want to add a product to your Amazon catalog. Today, we're only going to use a flat file, which you have seen in my last video where I just added one single product. So this one is a bit more advanced, but if you only want to add one product, then just go back to the other video because then you don't need to watch all of this and maybe be a bit confusing. But this is how the flat file is going to look at the end once you've downloaded it. So what do we need? We need a few bits and pieces. We Again, we need a product identifier, which you get from GS1. Please only use GS1 barcodes. Don't go for anything cheap. Um, it's just going to get you in trouble. So buy your GS1 barcodes. You can buy them in the US or in the UK or Germany. I like Germany because they're quite cheap. UK is really cheap. Australia has good ones. Um, you can buy individual ones. You can buy packs of 10 or get a membership for like an unlimited. And you have to renew this every year. I so say if you want to start selling off Amazon as well, then I highly recommend getting proper barcodes. If you are not sure, you just kind of want to test and you don't really know, then you can also opt in for the G10 exemption, which you get by clicking here on G10 and just follow the steps. If you have a brand you want the exemption for, then you have to upload some photos of your product. If you don't have a brand on your product, just type in generic, which is also the example I'm going to show you today, just to make it easier. So these are one, one, the one thing we really need. We need some sort of identifier. The second thing we need is photos. You want to make sure you have your images uploaded to your OneDrive, Dropbox, photo bucket, any cloud service, so you can quickly get the image URL to upload into your spreadsheet. And the third thing we really need besides all the information that you hopefully already written like your product title bullet points keywords like all these things i'm not going to show you now i'm just assuming that you already have them so i'm just going to show you where to pop them in the third thing we really need is SKUs. SKUs are super super crucial so if you go to my own website um candyonline.com.au you will see up top there's like a free SKU generator so just use that one or um you can obviously create all your own and not it's, it's not magic um, so what you want to do is make is be able to identify your product just based on the SKU. The SKU stands for stock keeping units. It's all crucial for your inventory management system. Because in this particular case, it's a bit different because I'm using colors. So in your image that you have on your dashboard, you will see the colors and you see, oh, okay, cool. That's all, uh, that's green cups and they're orange and they're blue. But if you're selling t-shirts, let's say all white t-shirts but they come in different sizes and they may be for men and women the photos will look very very similar the main the main image which you can see in your amazon southern dashboard you will not see on the asin or anywhere what kind of product that is even if you hover over the product title it will only tell you at the very far end if it's an l or an m or whatever size so really only there you have to hover over everything if you're using a skew any report will be so much easier for you to read because you see instantly on the SKU, okay, this is a mug set. It's a set of six. It's orange and it's 12 ounce, right? So we're going to add a new one. I got orange and green and I want to add a blue. So we're adding 
a listing today with three different variations because it's always the same. It doesn't matter if you're adding 12 or 100 or just two or one. So I always do that. I generally do recommend if you're not sure that you're going to sell um, multiple variations later on, um, only like you think already, hmm, I'm selling vases, I'm going to sell them now in white and I'm eventually I want to add the black ones as well. You can already set up the listing as if you already have variations. Um, it's just easier to add them later on, where if you create a single listing, you will then have to later on create still a parent listing and add the other listings to it. I already made a video about that on how to add variations to an existing listing. Um, if you want to look at that. But this one is now completely creating from scratch. Nothing is in your Amazon inventory. We have nothing there. We're creating. We want to have these three variations. We want to sell coffee mugs, sets of six in three different colors. So once you've done that, you need to go and get your you need to go and get your um, inventory uploads. That's the easiest way to go is to your inventory. And then down here, you have at product, which is this page. And you also have add products via upload. Important, if you are not on a professional plan, you won't have this option. So you need to make sure you pay your monthly fee. Otherwise, you can't see that. And then you can't upload them. Amazon, obviously, they always make their money somehow. So that's what you get here. And then you go here to your uploads and you can choose. Obviously, first you have to download it before you can upload it. So you just type in your product, your main name, and then it comes up with all these great category suggestions. And in my case, because I'm selling coffee mugs today, I just chose the mugs. But if you're not sure, you can also go and find something else. You can, um, you don't have to go through here. You can just clear the search and actually go through every individual bit. If you're not sure what category, go and check your competition, uh, where they, where they are selling in and use something similar. Um, just a side note, the deeper your categories are, so the more subcategories you are, the more likely you're going to have a bestseller status later uh, because it's just easier. So you have a bestseller. It can be bestseller in mug sets, which is obviously not the same as in home and kitchen. And you can see there's way less here category. So it's harder to be in coffee mugs bestseller than in mug sets, even so they're both in um, kitchen. Yeah, so just check it out. I also like in this particular case here, you can see that we have home and kitchen and we have industrial and scientific because I'm selling coffee cups. I would make sure that if I use max sets, I'm using the one in home and kitchen. You want to make sure it's highly relevant because that will help you, um, will help the algorithm to show you up for particular keywords. Um, so make sure you don't try to trick yourself in somewhere. It's not going to help you on Amazon, maybe even change your category later anyhow. So we got our listing here. Then we just choose advanced. Don't want to do customs and generate our templates. And I already downloaded that. If you are a MacBook user, you can upload this into your Google Sheets and fill it in there. I'm using it here now today on my PC because it's just a bit quicker to fill in. And then this is how it's going to look like. A bit scary because you have all these Chinese instructions on one side. But it's actually improved a lot over the last year. So I remember when I filled in my first spreadsheet, I was crying on the phone with the support because they're just, they're just so unhelpful. But today it's way easier. It's quite explained quite well. So it tells you exactly how your images have to look like. Um, it gives you an example for all your potential things. So last time we added the just a single product, which is really simple. And today we're going to add a child variation which is this one. So you can always skip back and forth and say, okay, where's this filled in? And then you go into the actual template, which is this one. But this is what we have to fill in today with our data that we already have, um, which is what we're going to do now. You can go through all of these. There's also a few videos in the Seller University on there that would explain every single bit. But the more often you practice this to fill in, the easier it will get. And keep in mind, Whatever you do on Amazon, you can't destroy Amazon. You're just going to have to delete things and redo or overwrite um, or just add a new one. You can't break anything. You can't stuff your listing up. Even if you delete your listing and uh, you can relist it and the yes, the reviews will come back and the SKU will be the same um, if you add the same SKU and the F and SKU. Everything will stay the same. You can't destroy it. Just make sure that somewhere 
on your PC or any whatever you use, you have a hard copy of all your information, which should include once if you already created a listing, it should include your ASIN and your SKU and your FN SKU. If you don't, if this is completely new, then you should have a listing somewhere where it can be a Word file or a spreadsheet. That's my description. This is my bullet points. That's my product name. That's my keywords. Here's my UPC. That's deciding every information that we're going to add in here. Once you've filled this in, this can be part of your managed inventory management tool. So let's start. So we're going to have coffee mugs. Our first one that we're putting here, number four, would actually be the parent. So the parent is not sellable. That's why we don't need to fill this many information in. And you see, as soon as I tick something here, it will tell you what you need to fill in. And it's really, as you can see, it's not much. Not many information uh, are actually needed to just create the listing. We need to have the parent. And here we have the parent and our three variations. The next one is the seller's queue in. If you ever created just a listing on Amazon, you see that the seller's queue is under the offer tab and you don't actually need to fill it in, it's not required. Um, but I highly, highly recommend to personalize it. Use, use my tool here. Here we go. And we just call it the parent because if you don't fill this in, Amazon will give it a funny number and it's really annoying. The next one here, so you can also download this sheet. I don't do that now. So this is our orange. Then we have our green one, our green set. And then we have our blue set. Our brand name, like I said before, just because it's easy, I'm going to use um, generic for now. You can copy this and pop it in there. And now the product name. In my case, I'm just going to use a very simple name, but keep in mind your product name is your title. So that's the most important part when it comes to indexing and keyword indexing and the algorithm showing you and ranking. So you want to choose three to four really great keywords in here to form your title. The formula should be something like, if you're already brand registered, Amazon adds your brand anyhow. If you're not having, if you don't have a known brand, leave a brand name out. But then it should be your main keyword to the, the first 20 to 80, uh, 20 characters, five to six words, main keyword, and then the other two keywords we combined with some emotions and some features. So something like um, ceramic, whoops, <laughs> coffee. Govy Max set of six done ceramic um, and that's my parent and I'm actually going to call these oops and I'm gonna copy this all in here and obviously here up if, if I see, if I know that orange is a great keyword, then I call it um, ceramic orange, orange coffee max. And these ones are my green ones because it could be a great keyword. Obviously, it depends on your keyword research. I'm going to make another video on how to create a perfect title. Then here we have our ID, the parent, which is our, this, this top one here is the parent. That's the parent. We don't, you can actually add, maybe add the T here. So it's confusing. Um, the parent doesn't, is not sellable. It's just a placeholder. So you don't need to add any more information for this one. Here for drinking cups and stuff, you want to put an ID in it. If you have a GTN exemption for the category home and kitchen, in this case for the brand generic, you don't need to fill this in. If you want to sell these products with a UPC barcode, then this is where you put your pop your UPC numbers in your 12 digit code and choose over here UPC. Right? If you get your numbers from um, G's one UK or Europe or somewhere, then you use EAN. But in my case, I'm just going to leave this empty now. 
I don't need to put anything in here. This one, I'm just going to choose my coffee cups. That's the category. They all need to be in the same category. And here, I don't need to fill anything in for this one. And I got my fluid ounce. I fill that in. Should obviously all be the same. And see how easy that is? You just like fill this in here. Super easy. All at once instead of having to go into every single listing. So if you ever create a listing on Amazon, you know what I mean. You would have to do this in every single one. Go through all these details and then save and finish. And when you're finished, you have to do the next one. So here now we're doing all at once and then we just upload it. Send a price. I'm just going to sell this for $19.99. I know this sounds really cheap. Um, I do not recommend selling this for $19.99 if you have a set of six. And here in the out, I'm just going to pop in one. Um, you will overwrite this anyhow because this, when we upload it now, it will be an FBM listing fulfilled by merchant. And once it's uploaded, we can change it to fulfilled by Amazon. And this is what I meant before. You will need a main image URL. You see that? For the parent, you don't need to put one in because it will, Amazon will automatically choose one of these ones. So because we're having these different sets, here, normally I would put one in orange, one in here, green one in there, blue image. It does help to have the set of orange really big, but maybe at the bottom right show that you also offer other colors. For clothing, you don't need to do that because it gives you the other options anyhow, and people can see that you offer other colors. In the home and kitchen category, customers will only see but you offer also another color when they click on your listing. And because Amazon will choose which one they show, I try to make sure that the other colors are available on my main image. So you can go here to Unsplash. It's pretty good also for social media. And if you already have them on your own website, if you're already selling on your own website, or like I said, if you have them in your Dropbox, you just do a right click, get the copy, the image address. And then we go here, pop it in, pop it in. I'm just going to use the same one for all the other ones. And obviously here you have all your other nine images or eight, eight more images that you can use. Fill them all in. And again, it's so simple. You don't need to do anything. And now this is here the most crucial part, this one here. Absolute most crucial part. So you see, this is the parent. So this is where we actually tell Amazon these four things that we just popped in here, these four IDs, what are they? So this is the parent, and these are the children. So this is where we tell Amazon, this is the only thing where you really have to pay attention. And now we have the parent skew, which is this one here. And it's so easy to identify as a parent because we wrote it, wrote it down. And now we have to go back to this orange V. And it's a bit different. Sometimes it's X, sometimes it's Z. So it's somewhere here in this orange part. It's called variation. And that's where you, that's where it's so crucial. So every flat file looks a bit different depending on category and also depending on marketplace. So if you have the same product you want to sell in, in Europe and in the US, you will most likely have to use two different flat files because they're not all identical and then you get a lot of errors. So we obviously we don't need to put a parent skew in there because that is the parent. And here we pop this parent skew in. So we tell Amazon that these children belong to this parent. That's why they have this parent skew. We tell them what's the relationship. It's a variation. Yeah. And you can see you also have the option to do an accessory. So sometimes it helps, like let's say you're selling a salad bowl and then your, uh, your accessory could be the salad utensils for example right and then we have the theme so now we told them okay this is a variation and now we say okay in my case it's the color but maybe it's also color and size so if i wouldn't just have the 12 ounce but maybe also have 10 ounce or 18 ounce or whatever then you I choose color size or if i have a different packaging now maybe i also sell them a set of two then i can do color and um item packaging quantity so there's a lot of different variations so just before you start this just have a little write down on what kind of things you're going to offer and then it will all be much 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 easier so in my case here very simple today i'm just going for color 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 
So you can fill everything in whatever you want. And um, this is very important here. So this is kind of what you tell Amazon to do with this flat file. Do you want, in our case now, because we're adding a complete new listing, um, a, a listing with three variations, we're going to say update. If you say update, it will take all the information from this flat file and overwrite um, the catalog. So if you already have these variations in there, and for example, you're changing, you can't change the SKU, but if you're changing the, the images, for example, but nothing else, and you go on update, if you have not filled anything out, it will actually delete everything else. Where if then, if you already have something in the Amazon catalog, then I generally say go to partial update because um, then it will keep all the stuff that you already have in the catalog in there and will only exchange the information that you actually filled in here. But if you ever have to overwrite a listing because you've been hijacked, you can't make changes, and then you have to delete your whole listing and wait 24 hours, which is not a big deal. You're not going to lose your reviews or anything. You're not going to lose your inventory. It's all fine. It happens all the time. So the only thing you need to do is to um, delete your listing, wait 24 hours, and then go fill everything back in, everything, including your bullet points, including your description and everything else, and then go on update. So it will overwrite the complete catalog. If you just want to make minor changes, you use update. Ignore delete for now. So we, in our case, we can use either or because we have nothing in there. So we can do update or partial update. I just partial update now. And you can fill this in. You don't have to here. This is where you would put your product description. You don't need to do this for um, the parent because the parent doesn't need a description. So we just type in here your description, which you hopefully already have copied somewhere. Either you have a good copywriter writing this for you or you've written something yourself. And then over here, you can fill all these information. And then, like I said, there will be a few. If you're selling in certain categories like toys or clothing, more of these fields will be mandatory to be filled in. In our case, because it's home and kitchen, very simple product, you don't need to fill anything. And generally, it's like at the beginning here, uh, there's a little red cycle in there. And that's how it is. Here you have your bullet points. Again, the parent doesn't need any information. Um, you fill these in. And that's so awesome because because for my coffee cups, right, and for most of your variation, they will all be the same, right? It's just you have a few keywords that you maybe add for for the different colors. Like you say, it's an orange cup or it's a vibrant orange or who knows, um, grass, green coffee cups. And maybe that's a great keyword. And then you change these individual little keywords in the bullet points. But the main body of the text will always be very, very similar. So you can just copy, 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 paste, 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 instead of having to go through every individual listing. It's our colors as a color variation. So I do like to put this in here. So there's no confusion. Green. And then we also have our blue. Don't need to do that. We don't need to, we don't need to fill anything in, especially when you just want to make a few updates. But in saying that, because this is our first listing, I like you to fill in as much as possible. Because then you don't need to do it later. Ah, oops. And you don't need that. See, there's some voltage here. If you obviously, obviously, this, this is for pro all products that are possible to sell. Um, in this category, so fill in whatever you can. If you're not sure, um, it, you can just either leave it empty or you can go and not applicable. So, and then we go here, and the item weight and item dimensions. Then you have the, so you always have to choose the unit. Very important. That's the most errors. If you upload your flat file later and you get errors back, most of the errors will be that you haven't chosen a dimension like this one here, and then something didn't make sense. In all honesty, if you're just selling in a coffee cup for now and you just want to learn how to list, just keep it very simple and you can add more and more things later. The more things you add, the more errors you're going to potentially get, obviously, um, and then it's a bit hard to find out. But again, if you ever have any trouble, it tells you here 
exactly what needs to be filled in and where the errors are. So an error file, if you get that, um, if the status says all oh, errors, errors, then it will be up here and then you can always click back and forth, back and forth. So um, this is really it. That's, that's all we have to fill in. So this is how your variation flat file will look. It will have a parent and we'll have three variations in my case. I make sure my most important things are again, the SKU that you have typed in the IDs. If you have IDs from you from GS1 or not, you leave it empty, but then you need to make sure you applied for the GTI exemption in advance. The parent stays always empty because it's not sellable and everything else. You just fill in with the information you have, including description, photos, um, bullet points and everything else that need to be filled in. And then to make sure Amazon understands what is the relationship between these four, you need to type in that the parent here is obviously my first parent. Uh, and these are my three children with my different colors. And you see my um, theme is the color variation. That's my that, that's why I do it. And I got here my um, partial update. If you have multiple products, so let's say you wanted to add uh, now drinking glasses or wine glasses or anything else really that's in the same it should be in a similar category at least home and kitchen then or like here other coffee cups um, have sets of two or fancy ones thermal coffee cups and stuff and you want to use them in here you can add them to this flat file and just start the next one yeah I'm going to upload file and your listing so very, very simple and easy for you to create your listings. Um, if you have any questions about this whole flat file thing, and I know it can be complicated, but you remember, keep in mind, you can't break anything. So just give it a shot. Try, delete, um, adjust, call it support, even though they're not very helpful. Watch the video, maybe watch the video once and then do it at the same time with your own listing and see if you find an error. If you ever have any trouble, leave a comment or send me a message. I'm happy to look over your flat file. Sometimes they can be a bit tricky, um, but just make sure that you have all the information that you need, like your, your description, your product name, your SKUs, your GS1 codes or and your photos. And then it's really, it's simple. You can do it. And it just takes a little bit of practice. Um, I know there are some VAs who tell you they can do that. Personally, I have not once met a VA who said there are data entry specialists for Amazon flat files, either on Upwork or Fiverr, who could do that properly. Uh, because generally they just fill them in, but they never, they never upload them. So they never see the errors. Um, so it's just better if you do it yourself as much, put as much practice as you can. And the better you, the more you do it, the better you get. If you need help, pop me a message. If you like this video and found it helpful, leave a comment, like, and subscribe.